right, as the world turns for the Dolphins universe, uh, kind of continued with the Tua and the Flores thing. Flores had his thing. You guys have heard most of, most of the stuff other places, so I'm not getting into it. There's something I'll get into another time. Uh, but just let's hope we move on. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that some people, though, that have never played football before or been in the military or been in a military type environment, it gets uh, weird. You have this undertaking, which is not human. You know, football's not human. It isn't. War is not human. Uh, training somebody for a, a battle is not human. And so you get humans trying to train people to be unhuman, and it's very easy for the people doing the training to become unhuman. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Uh, whatever Flores did, didn't do to Tua, uh, it, was, it was bad. It's clear. He admitted it. He understood it. I mean, you got to... Uh, but it's not like, you know... Uh, you know, he's murdering people and stuff like that. So it's good that he's owned up to it. It's good that Tua is in a better spot. Let's just be happy that everybody goes forward and is better. Uh, the one thing I do want to focus on is clearly uh, Flores had his faults and clearly it wasn't the best thing for Tua. But we've always got to, we got to continue to remember that he, Flores wasn't the top of the food chain. And while we see this investigation all the way up to him and analyzation of how it went down, as fans, we, you know, to be fair, we need to continue to look uh, higher than that because it wasn't as rosy as some people uh, make it appear. So that's my two cents on it. I'm going to get into that, uh, some, some clear stuff. Uh, I, I don't think anybody is a true monster in this. It's just, it's very hard. This is a very stressful environment. And if you've had kids, you know, they'll stress you out and you haven't eaten and slept and you lose your mind. You're like, who is that guy? This is very, very hard for everybody involved. It was not easy for two. I'm sure it's not even easy for Stephen Ross and Chris Greer. So that's my two cents. I want to focus today uh, on these injuries that are happening. Um, and now you see there's a little bit of a thing on Hill's hand. It doesn't look terrible but there's a lot of little injury stuff that I want to cover, some little news and notes. Uh, but what I want to focus on is the backup quarterback situation. In football, even at the lowest level, there's football talk, coach talk, player talk. You're told how to say a lot of stuff and, and say nothing. You're taught how to make things that aren't positive sound positive. It's just the way it is, especially on the NFL level. Now, Mike McDaniel is very good at that. He is very good at creating filler and turning something, but that's part of the job. I mean, being a head coach is a little bit of a salesman, so I never knock these guys when they're lying to make things sound good. Uh, but he talked about um, what we're trying to do is evaluate who's uh, best to serve a, a difficult situation. Uh, McDaniel said, inherent being a backup quarterback is that you are in a difficult situation. He said he's purposely put these quarterbacks in a difficult situation. And I've talked about that about a week and a half ago, but I'm going to take week one and week two and show you our backup quarterbacks. And it's clear what he's saying is true for the most part. Uh, but then there is some concerning things behind that. And it's not about the quarterbacks. So that's going to be my thing. I got a nice little graphic for you. I'm not going to go on too long. And that's going to be the whole deal. Now, Friday, I'm going to do the live here. Uh, uh, I have questions in the comment sections. I've posted them on the, uh, the notification thing for the live. So if you want to go there, you can put your comments and put what you want me to study out there, or you can put it here and I'll put it there, whatever. Uh, so that's Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, guys, come check me out at Curtis at Finns News One. I got to do this whole thing. Uh, I'm actually starting to like it a little bit. There's so much information and meeting of people. And in fact, um, a real great guy uh, that, that watches me talk to a bigger guy and the bigger guy might come on his show and I might go on his show, but I'm not going to say anything until it's done. But it was real nice. Some real nice guys out there, these big guys. Uh, so but the, the, the Twitter thing, come check me out there. And then I'm starting something called No BS Film Studies. I, I see a lot of film studies and they're not bad. In the, in the amount of information they give you, they're, they're right, but they, they cherry pick sort of at times the good stuff. 
So I'm going to do these no BS film studies on our players, other teams' players. I love to study football, uh, and I'm going to really do my best to present uh, really detailed uh, film studies going forward. I'm going to try to jaze up the best I can with my limited, but not too terrible, uh, film editing abilities. And my first guy is going to be Jordan Brooks. Uh, Alf has been talking about him. I, I think the world of Alf, uh, guy's a big dude. And he treats me like a real person. And he's just a great guy. And he's he got me on him. And I think so far he's been right. There's some things I'm still curious about. So that's why I really want to do the film. So he's answer my questions and see where he's at and present that to you. So I'll be out tomorrow. Okay, so uh, another player who took an 11 part in 11-11s was Jalen Phillips. I saw that. I was so excited. Whoa! And he had a productive outing. Later I found out it was a slowed down 11 on 11 and so this is good news. Um, Kim Bo Camper said he doesn't expect him to be here. He's slip of the tongue. I don't know. This is good news, but I don't know if this is definitive if he's going to be ready week one. Uh, they could put him on a 53 and hold him back just in case and then bring him out week two. Some people are saying that. They could put him on uh, IR. I hate to waste it, but it, they might do it because you want to get this guy uh, prepare as quickly as possible. Could be ready week one. I don't know. Um, so that was that on that. Uh, a lot of people weren't working. Brooks, uh, Chris Brooks, concussion, River Craycraft to be out for a while. Spraylon Sanders, issues, Tana, Kana, Kana. Oh, it says Tana, Kana there. So I was going to go with Kana, Tana, but it is right there. So he was out. Aiden Rucci, who I've been liking, is blocking. Uh, I'm kind of getting a little high on him. Uh, Aaron Brew is still out. Kendall Lamb. Uh, not sure what the deal is on that. Uh, Anthony Walker still had some things. He's been out for a little bit. Benito Jones is still limping, and, and, and Emmanuel Agba. I don't know if that's a vet or not. Cam Smith is going to be week to week with that hamstring. Uh, and, and Javon Holland, don't know what the deal is. He's been a little nicked, but, you know, nothing here is totally terrible. Um, but none of this is great. Uh, let's see. Um, Ethan Bonner's back with the head, the, the, the head thing. He had the red jersey. Jalen Wright had, has got the red jersey on, and Jody Fortson is the red jersey. But then Tyreek was spotted wearing a protective brace or wrap around his right hand. He and Jalen Waddle did not work on their, uh, did work on their own, but Hill, uh, Hill did not catch a pass. It's, he's going to be fine. Uh, but I, you just don't want Knicks, guys, even no matter who you are. It's a human body, and once there's inflammation, once there's damage, and you can't live a normal person's life. Uh, it's difficult to say how this will play out. None of it's good, uh, but is it a little bit or more? We'll see. But there's a lot of stuff going on. Tehran practice today, which is good, but um, it was you know slow paced, and he hasn't practiced all season. I'm sure he's going to be ready week one, but I don't know if this is setting him up for success for his health. You've got to get enough reps in order to get the body ready. And sometimes, you know, a lot of us in the conversation, in the comments, we talk about like maybe, maybe all pulling all these practices back and not getting as much work is actually contributing to this. And it's possible, especially for the older guys, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm no expert. I mean, I think I'm an experienced novice, but I'm no expert. Uh, but here's the one thing. I'm going to get into my first graphic. Uh, Liam, somehow, I think Kelly reported this, somehow, somehow, like, I mean, somehow, somehow, Liam Eichenberg managed to get pushed into Tua by Calias Campbell. Somehow. Power. No power. Somehow. Uh, and it actually put Tua on the ground, producing the first real sack. <laughs> Yeah, boy, we got it. Uh, kid's a good kid, but come on. I mean, hey, you, listen, look, I'm, I'm here. I want to I see you in the face. Who on earth is key, keeping Liam Eichenberg for $4 million with this production uh, and, and be really sane? I mean, is this really helping us out? You, you telling me you couldn't find somebody better? I understand he's a second and third round pick, but... The, do, uh, the 49ers cut Trey Lance. Sometimes you just got to, you know, cut the, out the bed. A uh, uh, famous writer that was training me said, murder your little darling, kid. Stop loving everything. You got to cut some stuff out. 
please murder your little darling. I mean, not literally, but what if he gets hurt in the season? I don't know. I must move on from that. But here's my graphic. Uh, guys, this is yards before contact. So you have, they measure the yards that the offensive line creates for the running back. And then what when the running back gets his first contact, that's where the yards before contact starts. And the yards after contact is what does the running back do? Look at this. Chris Brooks, 6.1 yards per attempt. That's awesome. That's a big run, guys, that's attached on here. But yards before contact was 135. Not good. Jalen Wright, he had 10 um, for 5.5, 3.5 yards before contact. That was good. Got to go back and see what that's all about. But then Devon uh, Achan, uh, yards before contact, one. You know, that's no good. Uh, Jaquan Burton. Yards per attempt, 0.3, negative 0.1, uh, one, uh, negative 1.2 yards before contact. Raheem Mostert, uh, yards per attempt, 1.4. Y- yards uh, created after contact, 1.4, so zero yards before contact. Jeff Wilson, same thing, yards before contact, zero. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, you know? Uh, I don't think I'm in, you know, I mean, can be a monkey, brother, but I don't know in any universe where... You know, zero yards before contact is good. Negative 1.2, I think we can all agree on that. One, we got to fix this. And we can. Look, you put Brewer in there, obviously, Eigenberg's out. It's a big deal. Uh, you get Tehran in there. You get, you know, you're scheming things up a little bit more. But that is a little concerning. No, okay? So that's that. I'm going to get into the quarterback situation Uh the backup quarterback situation got a real nice graphics. Before I do that, guys, uh, I gotta let you know the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the views, all that stuff keeps me in the biz to do what I'm doing. Uh, and my sponsors, they love that and they keep me doing it because this is their channel. It's not my channel, it's their channel. So, uh, I, guys, everything you're doing is awesome. And I wanna give you a shout out and a shout out to my sponsors because without the two of you, this show ain't going down. All right, so we can get rid of my uh, uh, less than beautiful mug and we'll put this image up and we'll take a look. And it's going to be week one and week two of Skyler and White, Mike White. And then in the middle, same as in the middle, will be Tua uh, from 2023. And then on the right will be week two of these guys. And you're going to see some interesting stuff. Uh, so here we go. And you can see to the left, you got Mike White, uh, White week one. Uh, and we went through this already. You can see that the ball came out 2.60, and that's not going to help us a ton. He had little pressure, uh, not blitz so much, ton of play action. I mean, 30% play action, 17% screen. That's a lot of play, play calls to help uplift your protection. Uh, and But then you saw that week one where... Uh, Skyler was kept clean 52% of the time, got the ball at 249, which is, doesn't fit within our like, recipe. He was on the pressure 47.6% of the time. And McDaniel put him in a situation to see what he could do. He only gave him 19% play action. And that is something we don't do here for a reason. And so this offensive line was asked to protect with a lot less help, and he was asked to operate with a lot of less less protection. And so McDaniel clearly was putting this, this putting him in a situation to see what was going on. Now White came in the back end; he had lots of protection. It wasn't so hard to trot. Now you can see Tua in the middle. This is what we kind of want: seventy five percent clean throw, around two point eight, two point nine time to throw, under pressure twenty four. It's not. What we exactly want is a little high, but, you know, uh, blitz 22%. That's what we're looking for. Play action is, we were 45% the year before, and we went down to 30 with about 15% screen. We were top five in these two categories as well as time to throw. Uh, and I, I I could probably put prop blockers per pass in there, but I'm not going to. So we protected the quarterback, but getting that ball out with our skills is how we like to thrive. So now we go forward to week two. You can see right here, uh, Mike White was kept clean 62.5% of the time. He was under pressure 375 Uh The ball came out, though, at 165, which was very, very quick. He improved that. 
but still under pressure. And the concerning part is he came in the back end again, guys. But remember, look what he had. He had 29% play action and 20% screen. That's almost 50% of the plays where he had pass mitigation to help the offensive line, and yet he was still pressured 37.5% of the time with 1.65 time to throw, clean time to throw. So he was doing what he was supposed to within the frame of what we wanted, and we even upped our help, and it didn't go well. That says something very bad about our backups, the guys we had in there. So clearly... Mike White did what he could within the framework, but it still wasn't enough, and it starts with the offensive line. It's clearly about this offensive line as far as the production. But again, these are tail-end guys. You're missing Wynn and Brewer and Tehran, who are three starters. So you're going way past your starters for the season, even some guys, fringe guys, deep into the hole of the abyss of our offensive line. So you got to put a little bit of, a lot of it actually, of caveat on him. But now when you look at Skyler, who came in early, he was asked, that he dropped his time to throw by one, from to 189, which is a huge difference. He dropped that, uh, see, almost over a half a second from the week before. And that really helped him out, and that was a big deal. You could see the pressure rate dropping down. But he was blitzed a ton, 31%. Uh, which was even more than last week, but the pressure went down, but it all started with that clean time to throw. Uh, but you see the play action went up from 19% to 25. The screens went up from 15 to 18. So they helped him with the pass mitigation play calls, um, but Skyler still got the ball out a little quicker. Still, it's still, when you look at that pressure rate, that is not a pressure rate to make you go, hi, I'm happy, 25%, when you're getting that much pass mitigation. Uh, but still, Skyler did a much better job, and it revolves around that time to throw. The quick time to throw is not because Tua sucks. It's part of the process. And maybe it's what McDaniel likes to do, but it's also what McDaniel's forced to do. And it's also what Tua does better, probably than anybody in this league. And so when you understand this, why is this so important? Because it creates context to understand the performance. You don't look at a performance in a bubble and say this, you have to look at the team, the concepts, the situations, and that together creates this nebulous evaluation. But when you've got an offensive line like this, and it will improve when you add Brewer, and when you add Tehran, my man Tehran, definitely, and then when you add in win, and you add in play calls and trying to, but still, this is not, a offensive line that is hard to trot. And offensive line sets the table, guys. So these backup quarterbacks were kind of put in situations that were tough. They were through calls and things like that. But then they were also in a tough situation because the offensive line was performing poorly. They're good enough. They're not as bad as they look. Uh, they're not stellar. Um, but Skyler did show improvement. His ability to get that ball out quick, and it should have been a touchdown to Barrows. It was a very nice play. Should give you hope. Now, the thing is, though, what do you do as far as these two quarterbacks? You cut Mike White. He's a free agent, and he's got a big money attached to him. You cut Skyler, and he's younger, and he has more potential, but he might be able to make it to the practice squad. I, I think that they're going to cut Skyler um, because I don't think anyone's signing him to the 53. I just don't see that yet. It's a big deal to take a guy, a quarterback, and say, oh, I'm putting him here. I don't think he's any, done anything to, to say, oh, I need to do this from another team. Uh, but if you let Mike White go, then that's your backup, and you might not find a starter equal. So somebody in the comments asked me to study out guys that are available that would be better than these two guys, and I'm going to do that on the live um, but I think that they might end up cutting Skyler uh, if they decide to do some things like, say, maybe keep Phillips and then uh, he's not ready like for the first week or two or something, things like that. Or maybe to keep one of these guys, say, like Storm Duck or whoever, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys that are fringe guys 
And then you could put him on a practice squad and then you always have him in your cache that if you go into a week and you need him, just pull him up. So I don't know. I think, I think these guys are doing a better job than they appear. I don't think they're great. I think we're going to keep Mike White. And I think that I think Mike McDaniel is telling the truth. So that's it, guys. Uh, I'll have that film out for you tomorrow. Appreciate all you guys do, really. This show is not happening without you. So be well, go Fins, Curtis out. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.